When you come right inside the door on your left side, you'll have this little box here. Up at the top right here, those are going to be your level readouts for your battery and your freshwater tank and everything like that. So your battery is full, fresh tank, black tank, gray tank, and then gray tank 2. You do not have a gray tank 2, so that's just an extra button there. Um, usually that's for the bigger campers if they have a um, bathroom on one side or a bathroom on the other and then the kitchen in the middle, they'll separate those ones out. Um, next over from that is your awning retract and extend. Um, retract is going in and extending is going out. Um, and then next, your water heater and water pump buttons. Your water heater, that's just how you turn it on. And then your water pump is going to be when you use your fresh water tank um, from outside. That's going to be how you get the pressure to use the water inside. So you'll want to turn that on if you're going to be using that. And then all of your little buttons here um, for your lights, they do different stuff. The first two are for outside, and then the last two are for inside. So this one is the little amber light that's outside. This one's your awning lights. This one's your main cabin lights. And then this one is your lights in your kitchen. So you can see all of those. When you come in the door underneath your stove here, you'll have your furnace fresh air intake. So that just has to stay clear of any debris or um, supplies that you might be bringing with you. For your oven here, um, or your stove, the three burners are all on the front there. You will need a lighter to light it, or a match, or something like that, but you will turn it to light, which you can see um, is just there on there, and then you'll light whichever burner it um, is depicting in the little pictures. Up above here, you have your fan and your light, so your light and then your fan. Above that, you have your regular standard house microwave. To the left of that, you have a light above your sink, and then you've got 110 outlets over there. For your refrigerator, all of this is run off of um, 12 volt, so you won't have to worry about um, using your LP for that or anything like that. Inside here, up at the top, um, there is the temperature controls in your freezer and then down below that you have the temperature controls in your fridge. Below your refrigerator you have your um, converter box here. You've got breakers and fuses. Those are regular car fuses. I mean, you can get those at an auto body shop or anything like that. Um, they are labeled all down the sides for each of those so you know which one does. Above your dinette kitchen table here um, you have the emergency window, and how you operate that is you're going to pull this top, push it out just like that, and then if you need to get out, you pull the red tab here, and that's how you open it. That goes for any emergency windows that you have in your trailer that are like that. Above here, you've got all of your TV connections and everything like that. There is a backer in the wall if you want to hang a TV up there. Um, and then you've got regular 110, you've got AV cords if you want to um, use your radio as a DVD player or anything like that. And then the little red button there is going to be for your TV booster. Um, it says when it's on, it'll be TV. When it's off, it'll be cable. Um, so you can turn that off with a little button that's located right next to it. And then for your radio, I'll get into that in the next clip. Um, but this is what it looks like. So for your radio... Um, first thing is just to turn it on, which will be the middle button here, and then that's also your volume and everything like that. Um, you've got your 1 through 6, which are preset kind of radio channels, just like in a car. Um, so nothing to explain there. You've got headphone and aux input here. You also have HDMI and USB. You have your mode button here, which goes through all of your little settings. You've got FM radio, aux input, aux input 2, um, Bluetooth, which is connecting to your phone, and then back to your FM radio here. Um, if you want to get back to uh, the radio quickly, just press the band button. Zone 1 and Zone 2 are going to um, be your speakers. So Zone 1 for you guys is inside, and then Zone 2 is going to be outside. And then you can change your display and everything with that. And then rewind and fast forward are all up here. And then to turn it off, you hold the button down. And it'll say goodbye and everything. Like that. For your bunks, you have regular 110 outlets and USB for the top. With the light right there, that is a push button. And then your lower bunk has just a regular 110 outlet here. 
for your bathroom sink and everything, um, you'll have regular hot and cold water up there, and then a GFI outlet, which is in the corner, which I'll go over a little bit more once I show you the storage that's under the bed. So underneath here, you have a little bit more access. Um, there is a door that leads to outside through this as well. The light switch for your little sink bathroom area is right to the side here. This is your GFI outlet, um, and the green light needs to be glowing in order for any of your 110 protected or your uh, GFI 110 outlets to work. Um, you can test it with the red button and then reset it and do all of that um, if it does trip. For up here, you have your furnace and AC controls and everything like that. So you'll press the power slash mode button until you get to the first one, which is going to be auto. Let's see if I can get that which is for your fan. Um, so you can see a little fan logo on there. Then you press it again and it'll be to AC. You've got the little snowflake. And then temperature controls are with these buttons. Press it again and it'll be furnace. And again, temperature controls there. Press it again and it'll be off. Um, and then you've got storage and the medicine cabinet. And then down below bathroom you have a light switch to the right when you walk in and then for your toilet it's on the platform here you'll push down this little lever or pedal on the floor and that's going to um, release some water if you had any in your tanks um, and you'll let it fill up about two to three inches before you use the bathroom but once you're done you push it all the way down and that will flush and then let it go um, if there was water in your lines or anything like that, it would start to fill up the bowl again just a little bit to make sure that that seal stays good. There is quick read instructions on the lid of the toilet here um, in case uh, you forget or you can't find the video anymore. Just remember that those are what that is. For your shower here, it's just a regular standard house shower except for at the top you'll have a little water saver switch. Towards the top here, it'll be this little sliding pin that goes back and forth. That turns the water supply off instead of having to turn um, the water off completely. That just saves um, some of your hot water since you only have about six gallons. Up on the ceiling, you'll have your fan. You just open it with this little crank handle here and then turn it on with the button. Just like that. And then you've got AC. Uh, vents in the ceiling in the bathroom and then heat in the floor. Um, that goes for the rest of the trailer too. You'll have heat ports in the floor and then AC all throughout the ceiling. For your bedroom you've got a light switch right on the right when you walk in and underneath your bed you've got some storage underneath here. So you can see all of that. Um, and then you've got all the storage that's up above and everything there. You do have a light that's right above the bed which is push button and then you've got 110 and USB outlets over there and then again you have your emergency window which is the same as the one above the dinette. Up in the ceiling there you have all of the TV controls and then the sticker on the wall says TV backer location so you can put a TV in here. Right inside the door you have your LP and carbon monoxide detector that's going to go off a few different times. If you use any heavy aerosols or hairsprays or anything like that, that might set it off. It'll go off when it um, has too much LP or carbon dioxide in the air. That will set it off. And then it'll also chirp if your battery is getting low. So just kind of keep that in mind. You do have a way of reading that out on that first black access panel box that I showed you in the first inside. And then to the left when you walk, or yeah, to the left when you walk in, you'll have your fire extinguisher here. If this little green tab um, falls in or anything like that, that means that it's not charged enough. So you'll need to get a new one to make sure that you always have that with.